Now I'm going to show you how you connect this device to the laptop in order to run the software with the device. As you can see, we have connected the ethernet uh, to the laptop and now the other end of the ethernet, we're going to connect to the camera. This is the ethernet and here, as you can see, we have multiple ports in the camera. I'm going to connect this ethernet cable in this ethernet port. Once I connect, you can see the light starts blinking. That means the connection has been made. Now I'm going to open the thermal tool software on the laptop. Once the thermal tool software is open, I'm going to connect the device to the laptop. In order to do that, first I will go to video. I will go to the option that says connect device. I will click on that. And now it is showing me three options, USB, AP or LAN. I want to connect it through LAN. But before I do this, I have to make sure that on my camera, I have the option of LAN selected. To select the option of LAN, I will click this option and I will make sure that this LAN option is blue. If the LAN option is gray, I will go back and just press it and return blue. Once the LAN option is blue, I'm going to click OK here and establish the connection. As you can see, the connection has now been established on the software. If I'm going to aim this towards the fan, you can see that whatever camera is being aimed at, it is showing on the software as well. In case your connection does not get established, it could be because the IP is not matching. To make sure that the IP matches, we are going to check the IP on the device first. To check the IP on the device, I will go to settings. I will go down to internet connection. I will go down and see local IP. Here I can see all the IP details. Now I have to make sure that on my laptop, the same ethernet IP has been set. In order to set the same, I will go on my laptop screen. I will go on my Wi-Fi option. I will click on the ethernet option here. As you can see, it says unidentified network here. When I click on that, I will get an option here that says ethernet and out here I will have change adapter options. When I click on change adapter options, it will show me all my internet connections. I have to click on ethernet. When I click on ethernet, I get this pop-up. In this pop-up, I have to select properties and change properties. When I click on properties, I will get all these options. I have to click on internet protocol version 4 TCP. When I click on this, I have to make sure that all these IPs match the same as the camera. The only difference is that in the first IP, as you can see, it says 101 here. Here, it only says 1. The last IP does not have to match with the camera and it should be different. If I want to connect wirelessly, I'm going to have to open this setting and click on AP. This starts the AP connection. I have to similarly go here, click on Wi-Fi and look for the same hotspot that is there in the camera. The hotspot name is saved as camera and I'm going to have to connect to it. Usually it will ask for the password and the password is 12345678 or it is saved in your camera settings which you can see accordingly. Now that I have connected to the Wi-Fi created by the device, I will go back to connect device. I will select the AP option and click on OK. This will automatically connect the device wirelessly. As you can see, you are getting the same image on the device as on the PC without any Ethernet connection. Now, after I've taken all the images on my camera, I'm going to have to import them in the software. To import the images, I'm have to go, going to have to go to File. Once I go to File, I have to see these options up here. I'm going to go to Air Import because I'm going to import it without actually connecting a USB. I would either go to AP or LAN. Let's say I'm going to do AP as I have no wire connected right now. Or if I had the Ethernet connected, I could also do LAN. But right now, for the video, I'm just going to do AP and I'm going to click on OK. 
right now it's not showing me anything. If I click on refresh, it's going to show me all the images that are present on the device. If I want to import all the images, I go to select all and it takes all of these images as you can see. If you want to only select one of them, you select just one of them. But now, just for the video purposes, I'm selecting all of them and I'm going to click on download. Once I click on download, as you can see, it is going to load and create a folder for me. It says download complete and 22 files were successfully downloaded. When I click on OK and I close this, I will see a folder here which has all the files that I just imported. When I click on this, it will show me all the images that I have recently taken. Now, if I want to view any of the images on the software properly that I have taken before, like I took in the earlier video, I'm going to click on this image. When I click on this image, as you can see, it opens this image and it gives me all the details here. If I go and on any pixel, it shows me the temperature at that spot. This is 49 degrees and this is just 31 degrees. I can add any kind of square that would give me all the temperature ranges throughout. I can add a circle that would also give me all the temperature ranges throughout. If I want to remove all of these, I can just click on this option that says delete. It removes all the images, all the objects that I made. One feature here is this feature, which is stroke tool. When I select the stroke tool, it will automatically see the hotspot, outline the hotspot and give me temperatures of that entire hotspot and how it is varying throughout. So if you have any particular hotspot, you just use the stroke tool and it will give you all the temperature ranges for it. If you had saved any audio while clicking the image like I had in the video before, there is a button here for the voice note. When I'll click this, it will play the audio that I had saved before. I have saved an image of the fan. Let's say I have all the temperature ranges for my hotspot visible here, the hotspot here and the visual image here. I just want to combine all of these and generate a report now. I'm going to go up here and click on export report. When I click on export report, as you can see, this is the object I had selected. This is the visual image. This is all the data for that particular report that has already come in here. If you want to create a report with a template that you have created for yourself or that we have created and given you, you're going to go here, click on the down arrow, go on new template page, and then you can select from multiple templates, whichever template you want to import. Let's say this is the template I want to import. I will click on this and select OK. And it will import this template page depending on your use case. Once the report has been made, I'm going to go up and click on print report. Once I go to print report, I can go to PDF click on print and it would ask me where I want to save this report and I can save it wherever in the file that I want to save it. I will just click on save and the report would be generated.